Hello, everybody. Sunday, gum plus Sunday. Gonna be off. You know, it's probably important. Sound. Sorry. Probably blowing everybody apart here with. Give me, give me, give me my mic. Put my mic on. There we go. That should be better. <laughs> all right. So today, I want to finish up Sasabi. Um, all the weapons are done. I've got my my last metal parts. Uh, nice little finish on it just to protect it. Uh, so that part's all done. And um, just used some canned stuff for that real quick. Um, just a nice clear coat. Kept it, you know, not so shiny. Um, matted and stuff. Hey, Colette. And, um, yeah, so we have to put the shield together. We have to put the weapons together. We have to put it on Sasabi and pose them. And uh, I'm not going to go crazy on that. I might change them into battle mode because that might be cool. So we could do that. And then we're going to start, start on the Gypsy Danger, which I think construction shouldn't take too, too long. But the painting is going to be the thing that really is going to take some time uh, because I want to do it right. So that is, uh, oh, what do we got here? Oh, look, there goes Dr. Crowbot promoting people to regular. Hey, congratulations on being promoted as a regular. Uh, the thing that sucks about this is uh, Phantom Bot, which is Dr. Crowbot, cannot distinguish between, you know, lurk bots and chat bots uh, as compared to regular viewers. So sometimes I don't know which is which because we keep seeming to get more and more of these lurk bots. So at some point, I'm sure Commander Root or some other dumbass is going to get promoted. <laughs> um, if that happens, I, I, there's... I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Um, I think the developers of Phantom Bot, which is open source and it's just community people doing it, are aware of it and they'll come up with something. But anyway, uh, I go all over the place on this. Let's get started. So to do that, let me first change things around, change your perspective around. We can have uh, the top perspective and the side perspective. I just need to move you around a little here and we'll get that going. Then I've got to set a, a couple more things up, I think. Um, Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. So first, let me go over meow. Meow. Come on, focus. Something like something like that, maybe. I uh, wish I could see my, my green mat. All right, I'll just I'll redo it once we get there. Okay, so here's all the parts we have to work with today. Safely cocooned in some paper towel, both for the purpose of uh, keeping dust off of them, keeping them, uh, but also keeping them buffered and protected. Uh, here's, here's a rifle, but we won't be using that. Let me switch my overhead. Ew. I'm not going to be using the rifle, but I did want to test uh, dipping this in the pledge just to see what happened and I dipped the whole piece and it actually turned out pretty damn well honestly I'm a little surprised I expected it because it captured a bunch in internally uh, but it seems most of that is drained out so it turned out pretty nice this guy is kind of fused now to it though this should be a movable part yeah that is definitely on there All right, well, lesson learned about that. <laughs> That's not moving. Okay. You know, Colette, there is, in Phantom Bot, there is a list that you can go to which will remove them from the top. So, for example, uh, because, like, these bots are in chat every time I start up. They have as much time as I do. Um, so if I use that command, it will not show uh, the bots. And I went through... People, of course, that I knew, you know, I, I kept on there, but people I wasn't sure about, I actually went to Twitch just to take a look. Did they actually have followers? And were they following anybody? You know, those sorts of things. Some of the bots are tricky that way. Others, it's like they have um, z zero following and like thousands of followers. So I was able to tell pretty well um, who was a bot and who was not. That's, that sucks, though, that you have to manually do that. In my opinion... Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Now we need to construct the shield. Let's start with the shield, I think. Let me just get this in a 
a place that will keep it out of the way. All right. Uh, I do have my handy dandy manual. I do use manuals on this. I think you're, you're asking for trouble if you don't, if you just try to guess at things, uh, because fits are important, and you don't want to mess them up. Oh, look, a Jerry here. Get out of here, Jerry fur. Okay, so I will direct us to the place where we construct a shield, and we can put that bad boy back together. There's my shield. Okay. All right, so to make shield, we need this big honking dude right here. Kind of hard to see because it's clear. Um, I need you. And I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember I actually broke a piece and had to repair it because of the way that they wanted to put this, put this together. They want you to basically snap, see if I can get that, there you go, you can see it pretty well there. They want you to snap this thing in like laterally uh, instead of just putting it on top, so I need to remember just to put this on top because I I did uh, damage one of these parts. See if I can't find it, or it was on the verge of damaging. Yeah, um, these parts when I was trying to push it in because it wants you to connect them to this, right? That was that was no bueno. So we're gonna do that slightly different from what the manual says. Um, let me just make sure I know. Okay, they want those there. Okay, so these guys, these guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and put on first in the correct orientation. Especially because I um, use the pledge on it, it's gonna be tighter. There's just mic microscopic uh, small amount beneath it. I'm, I'm trying not to touch the internals because if it shows, you know, fingerprints, I can't really get to them without deconstructing the model. So uh, my hands are clean. I washed them thoroughly prior to starting this, which is kind of important because you don't want smudges. Pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Okay, we got that. Now we need our J1s, which are these guys. Gotcha here. Yeah, I, I can actually hear the grittiness. I don't know if you guys can. But there's like this grittiness that goes on because I've got um, pledge inside the little cavities. Okay, that's, that's not going to... Oh, here we go. I need, I need something a little bit gentler than a blade. Yeah, snap ASMR incoming. some of this stuff up. I don't know if this is the first one or if I want to put this first. It should be fine. This should be fine. Okay, who else needs a little TLC before I pop you in? Nope, all this is good. I just need to be forceful with it. There, there's the snaps. Okay, there's that piece. And this guy probably has the same little bubble that requires cleanup. Oh, come here. Get lined up. Why are you not lining up? Okay. Pop, pop, this fizz. Okay, there's those. And now I need these guys. You have, yep, you got bubbles too. We don't want these kind of bubbles. They get in the way of our ability to connect it. Okay. Nope, you go this way. Definitely gets much tighter. All right. 
feels right. It is lining up properly. Okay. That guy. This guy, same story. Got to debubble it. And oh yeah, that's that's the ticket. Let me see if these things line up correctly. And it looks like they do. I tell you, on clear parts, like if you make a mistake, there's there's no turning back. And I don't know if you can see that, but right here, that's just an, a nub that I could not repair because it is on a clear part. If if I were to go any further with this, it would just destroy it. Um, I suppose you could if you really go crazy with sanding, but I don't really. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll pass. Okay, we got all that going on. Now we need this guy. He's good. Okay, you all lined up. He's solid. Yep, there's that guy. And I got my corner pieces already on there. Now we need the chevron thing. It goes on first. Oh yeah, there's, there's junk in here I need to remove. Hey. That's Kiba. Hi Kiba. Hmm. You know what helps if I orient this correctly. That that definitely helps. And not do it uh, upside down. Man, you being stubborn. Okay, there we go. One side and the other side. And yep, everything is correct there. And the piece de resistance. Definitely has bubbles all over it. But I think that turned out pretty well. The gilded shield design, as opposed to the really off-putting cartoony yellow sticker, or water, water slide. Some of these things are internal, some of these things are external, and I don't know the difference, so I'm just gonna clean all these out. Those are probably externals. Down here. Sure, I'm off camera by now. Okay. Use pants for cleaning. Edition. Okay. No rags around here. Okay. I want to be sort of careful with this one. This is a very important piece. So. making horrible noises at me. And I think I just need to keep working at it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I definitely want you to go in, buddy. Okay, that's that would be why. There it is. Now you. Okay, everyone connected. Oh, except for the center. Ah, that's a scary place to have to push down. There we go. You don't let us pop it off. You are not seating all the way down, sir.
Okay. There we go. Shield. Ooh. Yeah, it worked pretty good. It's a little bit rough. Yeah, exactly. You gotta know when to stop to fix things. You also have to know when to stop fixing things. Right? You got you got to be able to fix them and know when enough is enough. Know what you can get away with. I think the real um, mark of a craftsman is is knowing how to stop before further mistakes occur and knowing where you can make the mistakes safely. So if you end up having to make a mistake, it's going to favor um, a part that is, is not going to destroy the whole overall <laughs> piece, you know. And now we got to connect this guy to here. It's like a little, maybe, missile pack or something. I'm not sure. Just little cylinder things right here. Okay, we got all that. And now, we can construct the holding mechanism, which is these three things. My, my three metal parts. Um, okay. Step one is this. Step two is this. Might push a little bit of the paint off. Fine. Okay, we got that. And yuka ching over here. And this orientation. Yo. Are you still staying on? Yeah, you good. You good. Okay. So, yield is done. Sweet. Move to the side. I can get rid of this paper towel. It doesn't. We don't need to be working from the paper towel. Now we just have to put together the axe, and we're GG. Okay. I need more room. Camera. We're going on a journey for a sec, everybody. I just need to turn my tripod a little bit. Got the off kilter. That's good. That's better. Okay. Now for the axe, I want to do this in like the, the double axe configuration, which is pretty awesome, I think. Um, though I may have screwed it up. Okay, I am missing... No, I'm not. I have it in here. I was like, oh my god, I'm missing the smallest part. That, that's always terrifying. This little, this little nub right here is a single piece. Get it over some white paper so you can see it. That little nub right there is one little tiny piece, and if you lose it, you're screwed. I remember a quote that said something like, artists don't ever finish a piece, they just stop working on it. Yeah! Yeah. And I think, um, oh, I need to, I think the next pieces reflect what you kind of wanted to change in the first one, and that's how it just grows and develops overall. And I am by no means an artist. Um, but it's been my experience, both, both in terms of this, certainly, and in music, even in speedrunning. Speedrunning as art. These are really easy to put together. So. Nice. Come on, baby. Get in there. All right. And then these, by design, connect together. There are a bunch of options, uh, which is typical for, for Gundam, for Gunpla, I should say, for weaponry and how you can make it look and how you want it to do. I, I just think that this kind of double-edged hand battle axe is just a really cool look. Uh, it would have been cooler, I think, if I could have a bit more of a polearm length to it, you know? Um, but I think that's, that's pretty damn spiffy. 
Okay. Now that that's done, you can go ahead and get rid of, um, and of course there's there's more accessories for, for this dude, but I, I just want him to have a knight kind of feel, like a, a barbarian berserker kind of feel, I guess would be more accurate. Bring our model to the forefront here. Hi, model. All right, so now, before I go about posing him, um, I guess we could go into transformation mode a little bit. So I don't know. I mean, in terms in terms of like lore, I don't think he would be transformed if he was if he is going to be in the pose that I, I want to put him in. I'm thinking. Let me think here. Where does this go? Oh yes. All right, so let's just start by let's just put the shield on him, and this is this is going to be tricky to see all the way around, unfortunately. Not enough cameras. All right, um, this guy slots into here. If I can get it where it needs to be, correct? Up here. I guess up here. Is that right? Let me boink that out of the way there. And Give it a little push, and then you, and then you are a shield. I believe that is correct, just like that. Is that? Double check. Why not? We've got instructions here. Let's use them. Um, where? Where are you? Yeah. Yeah. Is that is correct? Okay. We got that, and now we got to put this axe on him. Um, usually, when it comes to larger models like this, there's little slots in the weapons that you can uh, attach to the hands. Because, of course, if you just try to put this little plastic hand holding it like, you know, like like so, right? It's the hand's gonna eventually just uh, open up, and you know, you lose your weapon. <laughs> so, higher quality models like this have the forethought. Make it so there's a, a little thing that you can use to connect it. And in this case, this is, let's see if I can't show you this. This is a, a really neat little feature I think that Bandai does. I'll zoom in a little bit. I can't get you to see it. Careful. Uh, maybe, how, how, oh, I know. I know what I can do here. I we'll, we'll have to give you a bit of a tilt, guys. A bit of a tilt. Okay. Up, C D Z. There you go. There's his hand, right? I'll rotate this a little bit. And there's his little thumb. See this little, uh, this little black square right here? It actually flips up. I can get to it. Careful. I had, I, I have no leverage. Come here, give me the leverage. You know what? I'm gonna take his hand out and do it. Oh my god! I took his hand out! Look, here it is. I can zoom back out now. Okay. Oh, duh. I think I was slipping from the wrong direction. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now we've got this little tab open. And that is how we're going to be able to attach this to this. So let me get his hand back on and open, and we can wrap his digits around it. Hot. Ooh. All right. And yeah, you guys should be able to see that fairly well. But you. In like a soul. Come here. I'm having a hard time seeing this. I think I'll do it with his hand off. Just easier to see for me. Thumbs in the way. Can 
Nope, nope, I, I'm pushing it back in. That's not what we want. You stay out. There we go. Okay. On there. Okay. Now we can just wrap those little digits around there. And the nice thing about high-quality models like this is you really can get detailed, like, to the finger if you want. I just want them to have a, a good, solid grip on it. So I'll make this a little bit more natural-looking by giving, by giving the knuckles a ridge. And the pinky is usually further down, so is the pointer finger. Try to make it a little bit more natural, get that guy tucked in. There you go. Like that. Okay, now we just need to attach you to here, which is easier said than done usually. Okay. There! <laughs> Meh! Alright. There you can see kind of a profile shot. Uh, let me move this back to where it was a little bit. Turn this guy around. Move him back. You're not going to be able to see the whole, whole deal, but there that is. And I can't seem to get my webcam to focus properly on this guy. Um, so it doesn't do it much justice. Maybe I'll, I'll think of a solution for that. But yeah, he's, he's filthy right now, so let's fix that. There we go. Now we're just going to do a little pose. Little pose. Now there, there are, there are um, things that open on him, like this guy right here. Right? It's kind of like a, a battle mode of sorts. So you can, you can start exploding him a little bit. That's a, a thing that happens. This happens uh, up top as well. But I think for the moment, I kind of like him just chilling like this. Kind of like that look. Uh, I need to turn him towards me just so I can now work him to the desired look. And I think what I'd like to go for... Is maybe, maybe, maybe I can pull this off. I don't know that I can though. No, I don't think he's gonna let me do it that way. Maybe I can do. Let me think here. Oop, there goes his hand. Moving it around too much. Get in there. Mm, weapons heavy too. That's this is a, this is a, a constant struggle when it comes to gunpla. Yeah, do something. Because um, when you put weapon parts on, usually they're they're really heavy, and the metal can have a hard time keeping up with it. I'm gonna do something sort of like that. Yep, I want to raise his head up like so. Or hit another his head. Yeah, that's not going to... I'd have to pin this if I want this to work this way. And I don't want to do that. But I might be able to leverage this in this direction. No. It's going to have to be basically vertical in some way and balanced. Okay, so we can get a little bit more dynamic with his um, legs, which usually means one in front of the other. Usually uh, when you're striking something, whatever hand the object is in, is behind and the opposite is forward. So I'm just gonna close him a little bit in that direction. And want that up a little bit more. I want it sort of sideways. 
Actually, I don't know. I think something like this. I want his his um, opposite side hand to be in a fist. Because if you're holding a shield, right? I'd imagine probably naturally just want a fist for rigidity. So I want to mimic what a human would do with that. I'm trying to also make it so I'm not covering up all this detail. A little bit of a bend there. A little bit of a bend here too. Not much, just, just a little. Like he's, he's kind of got a brace going on against whatever's about ready to hit him. Let me think about this. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's good. Like that. What I'd really like to do, I might be able to swing this so. Really wide out like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. I want this a little bit higher if I can make it higher, but I don't know that I can without popping the thing out. Yeah. Even their hand. Oh, and I do not want this thing popping out. So it's going to relax a little bit like that. I want a bit of lean forward on you. Okay, and I want you to be looking. that direction. A little bit more dynamic hip action would be nice here. I guess as far as I'm going to be able to rotate his head. So let me adjust the shield. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Let me turn him your direction. Maybe you can see him better now. like that. Um, I do want to extend some of these things. This is this is a cool thing on the backpack. So we'll put that into the battle mode. Explode that out a little bit. You know since since we're doing this I think I think this would all be worth it. Hey Dogmaster Posing is not my strongest suit, though. I can tell you that. Gunpla posing. Um, and then, does this guy do anything? I don't remember who else explodes. I don't want him doing the splits on me. Hey, Luke! Man, doesn't really do it justice, but this is actually a pretty cool pose. Let me do the other things, too, if I can. They're a little bit more difficult to do. I don't want... These, these are really um, sort of fragile. I don't want to pop them out. You can pop them out, but I don't really want to. I think this thing does something. Well, there we go. That's kind of a flight mode thing going on. Okay, there's that one. And we'll move this guy out as well. Gotta flip them up. There we go. Transformers! Okay. Um, I think is there's other things as well, like this, I believe, transforms. Let me let me look at his transformations. Yeah. This little guy. Oh, it does not pop out. It's not supposed to, supposed to pop out. It's supposed to Pop up slightly. That can stay that way. It's such a minor transformation. I'm not going to bother with it. 
you can't really see what I'm working on here. God, that looks cool. I like it. Let's go down. Okay. I really would like these to do their thing as well. But they're holding on to heavy, heavy machinery, so a little concerned about that. This thing flips down as well. And, all right, I need to get up and do this part. And the guy flips up like that, I do believe. Closing some of the stuff below here. And yes, yes, that is good. Okay, there's that one. We rotate. I've, I've suddenly decided, yeah, I want to transform him. <laughs> Because why not? He's freaking badass. Look at this guy. That goes down here. It flips up. Gently! A lot of weight on this arm. Okay. And get his foot back readjusted. I want more bend in this. And in this. Okay. And I want foot adjustment and foot adjustment. I want him leaning a little bit more forward. I mean, it's like a little, bit, a little bit more back leg action. So, oh yeah, he looks like he's about ready to really kick someone's ass five ways from Sunday. All right, what other transformations do we have? Oh, God, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get to those. I don't even know if I want to. You, you can pop out a couple of things on the side of his arms, but I'm not going to be going after that. That's, that's danger zone because I got the weapons on there. Yep, I got all those. And... Holy shit. Okay, we got a lot on the foot. Or on the, on the legs and stuff. So let me see if I can't figure this out. You are supposed to be able to flip up. Right? Just straight up flip up. One. Pull this thing down. Or out. Not pulling out. Is it... Oh, there we go. One, pull this out. Two, lift this thing up. Is that right? Yes. I'll do the same over here. Oh, no, I won't. Is this is this is resting on the back leg here? So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these. I'm, I'll keep this one subtle, like it's a little bit separated. So there's that. Now we got the back skirts, um, which is the two to the side. Ooh. Okay, I got that one. This one's gonna be fun to, to get out. Come here. There we go. That lifts up like so. And then this guy. Is it out? Yeah. Four. Lift this guy up. I am trying, but it's not. And I don't wanna I don't wanna hurt it. No, there goes the hand. Yeah, you're gonna have to wait until I'm done posing you. Then we'll put you on. I know what it's trying to get me to accomplish here, and it's not able to grab it. Oh, here we go. No, that's, that, that was pulling the thing completely off. Now that it's completely off, let's see. Oh, that's, that's right. That's right, these little weird side thingies. Okay, let me sneak my head around this way. So I can move you out of the way. These are nightmares to dust, by the way. <laughs> Just confirming that for you. Yeah, it's not one to do it. I'm not too concerned about that. I would like the side skirts out, though. That looks cool. Gives them more volume. And the volume is what's intimidating about this guy. He's just huge. Okay. Now, got to repose him, because after all that jostling, he's moved around a bunch. So, do that. Do that. And I definitely want a little bit of turn on this. And on this. So... 
Okay. And I think if I can give him kind of a, a back angled head tilt, that, that gives him some dynamic, uh, kind of a dynamic look, like he's, a, he's in the midst of a, a strike. I do want you doing the splits, but not too much, bud. And I want more out. Okay, and we can take our massive axe, pop her in there. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty freaking cool. Get these a little bit more spread out. I really wish I could get more knee, knee bend here, but I'm not going to be able to. Actually, I might be able to. Yeah. Got to transform that thing a little bit. It's not just enough to make it, usually. I mean, you want it, you want a, a cool pose, right? No, nope, don't do the splits that bad. I'm going to need this guy to go back in there and support. Is he looking like he's... Eh, I'm not... I really want you to lean forward a little bit more, bud. Just a bit that way. Okay, that's better. All right. I'll just sit here and look at that for a moment and think about it. God, I wish the, the camera was better so you could really get a sense of him. He's really pretty badass. I'm just moving over there so you can at least see the, the down view in terms of the colors and the uh, contrast. By far the best model I've ever done. So this is, oop, this is me knocking him over. Here, get in there. That's his head. There's that, so you can see. Really close zoomed up his chest, uh, chest piece, right there with a. Eh, trying to get in there. With the writing. I am going to be taking pictures of this dude and posting him on my Discord. So you can get a better sense of them. These things also open up, and I've already showed that. Um, and each one of these is individual. But it's a little bit more fragile, and I don't want to monkey with it too much. Wow. I like it. That turned out so freaking well. By far, my most detailed model I have done. Ah. Sassifying. Okay, let me go back to this. Yeah. And I wonder... Hmm. If I were to... Oh, show, Luke. How can I do this? Probably. Let me get a little bit closer like this. No, move, move the camera around the subject, not, not the subject around the camera. Okay, there we go. And maybe I can... the best it's going to get. Seems like it. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to borrow my phone for a second, which you guys are in. Hi, everybody in my phone. And we'll do this. Just give it some, a little bit more light. So you can see different areas on it.
Okay. Well, that turned out pretty well. Hey, Viking Omega. This is... Um, oops, let me turn off my flashlight really quick and not drain my battery. This is Sasabi Expo, and it is um, uh, the Verka. So your, it's your, your standard ne uh, Neo Xeon MSN-04 mobile suit, Sasabi, but it's in Verka, and it is Explo, or ex <laughs> Explo, ex, uh, Expo version. And for those that don't know, Verka refers to a version, um, whenever you see Verka, that usually means that, I can't remember the person's name, but it's, it's kind of like a superstar badass gun, Gunpla creator. Uh, it's, Kaz, I want to say it's like Kazumitsu or something like that, but it's like his version of a model. So with his spin on it and things like that, that's usually the Verka, which is really awesome. Um, I got this kit at uh, Comic-Con 2017, and it was so worth it. I was really concerned with it being clear, like making it work, and it just turned out so nice. I wanted this to sort of be, I was going for, uh, you know, a mobile suit doing its thing, right? So Sasabi doing, doing, its, doing its thing, um, but almost like you're seeing an, ex uh, an exposed version of it. Like you've got radar specs while seeing this, so you can see all the internals. And of course, this is, this is a really clean model, no weathering because it's clear. I, you know, weathering a clear model just makes it look like it's a dirty model. So. I am very pleased with it. And we will be doing, we will be doing a modeling shoot later, buddy. Yeah, that worked out really well. There's some really, really fine, subtle painting that you're not going to catch unless you see it live. Like, um, let me see if I can't point this out and see if it shows up on camera. I believe you can actually see that. Let me, let me do this. Don't touch the model. Danger, Will Robinson. Okay. Worked pretty well. All right. And no, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but I'll zoom in anyway. I'm right. I'm centered right over it. Okay. One of the things that's cool about this, this model. So here you see these um, pistons. I'm going to do this a little bit so you can see. It does actually have piston parts in it. I, I can't make it really do it because I got a shield in the way. But when I pull this apart, you'll see that the pistons are a little bit more exposed, right? Uh, subtle difference is I wanted this to be a different metallic color than the actual uh, metal part right here. With the you know where I got I'm definitely going for more metal accents and things. This is slightly bluer, and I think that does come across. I put I, I just put some uh, clear blue on top of it. So sometimes you can just shift the tone a little bit by using a small amount of clear acrylic and uh, and just airbrushing over that, or not over it, but airbrushing over paint using it. You can just get a slightly softer. Uh, or I'm sorry, a warmer or cooler tone, if, if that's a, a variance that you want. So let me zoom out. And I got another one of these clear dudes uh, from Comic-Con. Much smaller, but it will be very cool as well. Okay, so there's that guy. Go back to this. I know, I know I'm just going over it over and over and over it, but I'm just, I'm... I'm so pleased with how this turned out, and to be quite honest, I'm, I'm freaking proud of it, because this is the most difficult model that, that I have constructed ground up, including the painting, detailing, posing, and everything. So I just want to sit here and stare at it for a second <laughs> before it goes on my shelf of glory. Speaking of shelves of glory, I am um, putting together, I've got a thing I want to do, which is a giveaway. And more specifically, I want to do giveaways based on my Gunpla Sundays. Oh, this is my, my cleaning toothbrush for models, sorry. Um, just waving it around the camera. So I've got a uh, very basic um, real grade kit coming. And I've got a, a small you know, box of starter materials, which includes side cutters and uh, a knife and tweezers. Um, yeah, so side, side cutters. Um, some 
uh, sandpaper, including a trigrit, you know, uh, that's really good for that. I'm going to bundle all that together and I'm going to make a giveaway out of it. I'd like to do that hopefully next week, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do it. Uh, not everyone can come to these streams and I get that. I don't want to, uh, you know, while it's, while it's cool and everything, if people are, can't do it, I, I, I don't know how I feel about excluding them if they just can't make it to one of my Sunday streams. And um, I definitely don't want bots. I don't want people coming in here to follow just to do it. I would prefer people that watch this, you know, and have not made one themselves have a chance to at least get a starter kit and start, start working on something. That's my idea for doing a giveaway. Um, I just need to get the infrastructure in place, which is why if you've been looking at Discord, you may notice I have various things going on in there where I'm, I'm trying out different giveaway programs and options. Well, thanks. Thank you so much, Viking Omega. And I tell you, you know what makes the biggest difference on this? Uh, and you can't, if you're live, it really pops. It was using that pledge multi-floor or uh, what it, future, I think is what, what it was called before and it was something else before that, but dipping all the parts in that made a tremendous difference. All the clear parts got dipped in that. And then I used uh, Mr. Metal Color to do all the metallics. So it really reads metal. It's, it's very cool. Uh, the only thing I did not paint on these on this was the hands, and to be honest, the reason I did that is I liked the slight contrast with the hands. It's, it's, it's ever so uh, soft and off kind of blue-gray compared to the rest of it, and it, it, it still it draws good attention to the hands, makes them nice and articulated. God, he turned out so good. All right, I need to take pictures of him, and then I will post them on my Discord, uh, on my Instagram, and so on, various social media. Okay, um, give me a moment. I need to set up, set up stuff so we can start working on Gypsy Danger. And we can have Sasabi just chill in there for a sec while I do that. We can start on Gypsy Danger. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of, um, except for different weapon and everything, and they don't have a shield, a shield but this is like the, the Gundam version of like Failed Champion. There's just no, no denying it. It's just big, bulky, massive, hardcore armor with a, you know, energy blade axe coming at you. Uh, the shield does some amazing shit, too. Uh, not, not on the model, but in the, the actual Gundam animation. So this is, this is cool. Uh, he's got these thruster packs on the back, too, that you can't really see here, but that means that it's also a long-range um, mobile suit. Ah... Uh. I really like this. Okay. I'll stop Googling it, or Googling, oogling it. I'll stop Googling and oogling it. Yeah, that little, their little red tanks really, really came out well, too. Little pops of color. Okay, all right. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done staring at it. Oh, dog, dog master, if you want to do that, uh, it's exclamation point therapy. And then you type the number of banana stickers. If you don't know what the number of banana stickers that you uh, have is, it's exclamation points. There you go. Thank you, Luke. All right. Mobile suit Sasabi can go over there. Maybe I can fin finagle this so Sasabi can still hang out with us while we're, while we're working on um, Gypsy Danger. Little rifle. Pew, 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 pew. Okay. Little rifle, you need to go into the little rifle bag. And I don't want to forget to do that, so I will do that right now. Uh, what I do with all my models is roll over my microphone and break it. Please. Wires. Get out of my face. Okay. Um, I have I have little bags that I keep. 
So you see where it says Comic-Con Sasabi, that lets me know what model it is. But I have the extra blade pieces, the extra rifle, any of the extra um, polycaps, other pieces that, that, um, that came with the model that I did not use. I still keep them and I keep them in the bag. Oh, here's, here's a little feature from this that this does not go in the model, but it's, um, it's the, the pilot. So you can actually get a sense of scale because this little sphere represents the pilot. And I, I don't know how hard it is to see. I may be able to make, make it work on this camera. Come here, focus. But in there you can see the little clear dude, right? So as a sense of scale, oh God, as a sense of me throwing everything up at this guy and breaking it, it's all coming apart. <laughs> Not quite what I had in mind. I'm trying to get this in a place where you may be able to see it. There you go. So. That's the pilot right there. That's his little chair. That's how, that's how big this guy is. So six foot human sitting right there. Massive, these things are massive. All right, let me, let me get that the pilot back out safely without disrupting the rest of the model. Okay, use tweezers instead of my fat fingers. All right, you go in there. And the rifle is now safe. I'm not going to need you. This next kit that, that I'm going to be working on is not a Bandai kit. Um, I've looked into it a little bit, and it looks like the plastic is a, a little bit more hardcore, and it's not as uh, exacting or precise when it comes to, to the construction um, pegs and so on. So there may be a little bit more extra work to get this dude put together. My workflow is usually... Oh, no, Colette! You succumb to the power of negative self-image. Don't do it. Um, my workflow usually is I'll construct the entirety of a model, right? Then I will, um, after that point, once I have everything constructed, take all of it apart, wash all the pieces. I will separate the pieces into their constituent um, anatomy, right? So arms, legs, torso, and so on. Uh, and then I will start painting from there. Usually everything is going to get a primer at once. I just want to do all of it at once. So everything gets a primer at once. If it's a skeleton, uh, a frame, a skeleton, uh, I'll do all the metallics at once. Um, you know, if there's any finish that I want on the, the frame, usually I'll do those then, get all that done, and then I'll move on to the armor pieces and so on. Uh, this is going to be several steps because there are decals. Uh, the plastic looks like uh, shit, basically. <laughs> It definitely needs to be painted. Once it's painted, it's going to look extraordinary. But uh, let me let me get Sasabi a little bit out of the way somehow magically, so he can he can chill. He can he can protect the camera. I need you to go a little bit further this way, buddy. Oh no! Don't do the splits more. Yeah, good. Doot, 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 doot. Yeah, you just you just stand right there. Stand right there and, and defend me. Defend my honor. Okay, let me move you guys back. Okay. Uh, I am not going to be dipping this one too because it's, it's not clear parts. I will be using... Eh, I don't know what kind of sheen I want, to, but for protective coating, I may use the pledge. You can use it in airbrush, just like you would any paint. Um... I don't know. I might be going after matte too. This this is it's a weird finish. It's like this satin or semi-gloss sort of finish that I need to go for. We're definitely going to be doing weathering on this. Uh, I'm not going to overdo it. I don't want it look like want it to look like ultra battle damage, but we are going to do some weathering on it. Here's the model, by the way. Oh, wrong wrong direction. I think that's as far out as I can go. Maybe I can get it in here. Uh, it's it, you get half <laughs> half. Uh, Overhead or half in the profile camera. Um, maybe I can get this on here. Yeah, that's kind of what, what it's going to look like. But this is a Plomax model, not a Bandai model. I'm not sure. I, this would be the first Plomax model that I've done. It is, based on what I've seen, the best model, if you want to make a model for um, uh, Gypsy Danger. And, of course, it's from Pacific Rim. 
Uh, what's cool about this one is it comes with an LED. So we will be having a little bit of light going on with them. And I'm constructing this, uh, though I, I, love, I love this model myself. It is the one model my wife agreed that she'd be willing to <laughs> put out uh, someplace other than my man cave here. Because she really likes specific rim. And so we will be constructing it for her, which means I better not screw it up. <clears throat> okay. Step one, like, like anything else we do in model making, is to open the box, right? I mean, it stands to reason. We've got our instruction manual right there. I'm going to uh, get this set up. You know how I like to do it's It's where I, I will flip this over and use the box to organize all my, my, my pieces. So let me do that. Uh, and yeah, the, the instructions are slightly different from... Let me flip you over. Slightly different from the, the Bandai version of things, which is worse, or which is better, I should say. Now that's, that's actually pretty good. It's a little bit dark, but for, for this at least, when we get into the modeling, I'll turn the light back on. Um, it looks like they're asking you to do lefts and rights at the same time, and usually for like Bandai instructions, it's do all the left, then all the right, so that's a little bit different. Hey, sis. I'm going to try. Sizk Nizoxenzo. I will call you Sis. Hi, Sis. <laughs> um, let me see here. I've only briefly looked at this. Okay, we got a times two there. I think these, these, the colorations actually re represent the color of the plastic because really this is two tone uh, in, the in terms of the model kit. We're going to take a look at some of the runners before I get started as well. It's pretty cool. I think this is just order of operation stuff, this little green area. So this is, this is a bit different from what I'm used to. Here, let me, maybe I can actually let you see a thing. No, it's just going to be a jerk. There we go. Right, so it's got order of operations here. I have no idea what this means, but it's probably really important. Make sure something very important goes in this direction. I'm going to assume that's what it's saying. Uh, I think it'll be all right. I do have enough models under my belt. I'm going to be able to intuit uh, what needs to happen. Oh, and here's, here's, uh, here's the LED unit instructions. So we'll have that. And what else? Oh, interesting. Okay, so full construction, it appears, is, is uh, all at the end, the way they want you to do it. But I don't think you would need to. Very interesting. Oh, okay, so I, I think these are interchangeable. You can use this arm or this arm. And this, this arm is like the plasma cannon, I guess. So if you want to get him, uh, you know, get it all Mega man out, you could use that. And there's the information. And yep, on the back we've got the decals. All right, this is going to be a cool model. I'm going to turn this back on so I can see. And now we just need to start pulling things out of the runners. This is fine. I am good. I am good. I'm excited to get this project started. This is going to be fun. Try to get things a little bit more set up. You're, you're moving sideways. I would prefer you would not move sideways. No. No one needs a photo. Okay, we'll just start with that. Okay, now I just need to start taking pieces out um, and getting I'm ready to, to play with. Uh, this is going to have a lot more pieces, but not a tremendous number compared to uh, the, the model that we worked on where we started last week. And we will finish that on, on camera. I just want to um, use that as my model between, you know, as I'm waiting for paint to dry. So we still have something to do while we're waiting for an hour or so. I'm just going to take all the pieces out and we're going to organize them in the box. We can look at some of the runners as we go. There's the LED unit. And we got water slides. Yeah, these are definitely water slides. And water slides. Uh, you are safest right here, so you can just sit right there. All right, let's, let's get going. I'm going to assume all this is the usual. Yes, yep, it's the usual lettered parts right here. This is F, so I'm just going to start taking these out of the bags. 
the scale on this guy is 1350. So it's 1350 a scale. Which, damn, if that's the case, I, I actually want to take a... I want to take a ruler when we're done. Oh, wait, actually, I think I've got... Oh, yeah, no, this, this comes with vital stats. Gypsy Danger is... 260 feet tall at just under 2,000 tons. Big model. Or, you know, big machine. Way bigger, I think, than any of the, the Gundam in terms of scale. A lot of the Gundam scales are... Um, at this same size, I think would be the one... Well, I don't know. I, we'd have to build it first for me to tell, but probably the one, one to 60. So it's massive. Yeah, definitely makes Gundam look small. Yeah, it says this is uh, the Pacific Rim mech. F. I'm just going to organize. Yeah, this, this plastic... It feels a lot more rigid. It feels more like Lego. This is, this is some tough plastic. It's just like, you can see, it's like almost no wobble. Whereas if it were, it would look more like this if it were like a Bandai thing. So this is really rigid plastic. That, that can be a blessing or a curse. We'll find out. Put you there. Make a trash pile right here. And you are C. Here's um here's hands. Sense of scale. So this is hand size. Hand size is usually a good indicator of how large this is gonna be. This is gonna be a sizable model. Uh should be bigger than Sasabi by a little bit. You are a C. I can't wait to see what the, the polycaps feel like. And polycaps is a specific kind of um, plastic that's it's soft, softer. It's like rubbery. And uh, it's used to join pieces together, usually. That's kind of cool. I like the blade. It gives you, a look, looks like a couple options where the, the, the whip blade is um, exposed or it's put together. I gotta say the detail on this is crazy. They put a lot of detail into this. You, they, even, they even included, you can see on there, the wires, right, that, that make this a whip blade on the back. That's pretty freaking cool. I. God, the nature of this plastic, though, I don't know how easy it's going to be to remove nub marks. Guess we'll find out. Wow. Wow. Let me... I want you to see the detail on this piece. My fingernail for scale. Look at all that detail in there. That's impressive. This uh, appears to be an arm part, I would guess. Oh, and have fun with that. I, I really want to, like, we can, we can, it's going to be a bitch, but paint, like, the individual wires, and then we can put some Starship filth on top of it, rub it down, and it will look like exposed wires, which will be cool. Ooh, there we go. Oh. Moon Gundam had no polycaps. I did not know that. <coughs> um, what mech is this? This this is Gypsy Danger. This is a Plomex uh, model of the Mark III Jaeger Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. Did I see the new brush sets you got yesterday? I did not. Does that mean we're going to get more, more nail paints? 
brush paint stuff. That's going to be cool. I know, I mean, you, you had, um, you had brushes and stuff though, right? I mean, I, I've seen you use them. Are they pretty hype? Hype brushes? Got H. Sweet. Man, I, my hat's off to you guys that use brushes a lot because I just can't seem to make it work. H. H, H, H. And, uh, let's start stacking this way. H, H. There's H. God, this is going to be a durable model, though. I'm not going to be afraid to lacquer this guy. This is some heavy-ass plastic. Okay. Oh, more sword set. Oh, cool. Better brushes make it easier. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Now, you do a lot of brush stuff, too, Colette. It's not like um, every manicure you do, but you definitely do a good amount of brush stuff. Like with little ghosts that you didn't like that I thought were amazing, for example. The, the shield parts, the, you're a bee. Who knows, Colette? Maybe you'll enter uh, my little giveaway here, and you'll get yourself a Gundam, and then you 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 can apply nail art stuff directly to a, a Gunpla. I already know which one I'm getting too, or I've already got it. It's on its way, and it's a classic. It's a classic. Your first full airbrush kit, Risty? Yeah. Have you started? If so, just curious, how's it going? And I'm also curious, what would you say is, was the, is the biggest learning curve aspect of airbrushing? It seems to, it seems to scare a lot of people away. Um, but I think there's variance in terms of what the most difficult first step is. I'm just curious as being um, a new person to airbrushing, relatively speaking myself, what your experience of it has been. Oh, it's now now in that point where nothing wants to behave. So, to solve that problem, I can flip it like so. Here we go. All you're doing is a Sabi Verka. That's awesome, especially with airbrushing because you can do such crazy things with the reds, right? There's a part of me that wants to do another Sasabi model just so I can do a candy red on the armor. That's the only reason I want to do it, just so I can do a candy red. Got clear parts here. Uh, J and an E. Uh, when, when they're really little tiny runners, I don't worry about you know putting them in order. I just put them to the side. If they're tiny, they'll just jostle around and be annoying. And here's my polycaps. I usually keep the polycaps out. Wow, these are really hard polycaps. Crap. Oh yeah, looks more like Iron Man. That's awesome. Yeah, the mixing. Okay, so Risty, that's that was been my issue too. Is is the mixing and the ratios and the right consistency and making sure the pressure is all where it needs to be given the consistency. That's it's not impossible though. Slightly annoying, but not impossible. But yeah, that I'm in agreement with that. That was, I think, the the biggest challenge for me is the correct mixing in terms of ratio and thinner and all that. Though initially I didn't have the really good stuff either, and I can tell you, you you definitely get what you pay for um, when you're looking for stuff to thin and stuff to mix. Pardon the crinkling. I'm just getting rid of some of the trash laying around. So it doesn't walk off on me and have children. Which seems to happen whenever I'm working on a project. I just start finding trash suddenly appear in the most random of places. <laughs> it just starts walking away. Okay. All right. Uh oh. Get you all set up here. 
And there's not a lot of runners, so I think we're going to go side saddle on this. Yeah, that's good. Little dudes can go there. And polycaps. Okay. Coffee break. Other problem I have is hard to get airbrush paints where I am, so yeah. That, I mean, that's true. Uh, including acrylics, Risty. I can tell you I'm in California, uh, and I have to do some fancy things to get some of the lacquers I like to use. Which usually involves someone from Japan mailing me something that I bought from them and calling it watercolors. <laughs> it's watercolors. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, familiar with um, Games Workshop air paint. But that's, that's crazy that acrylics are hard to get. I would imagine so, Colette, but what, what's nice about this is more and more, um, there are, there's more, like, uh, I don't know, export stuff for this sort of thing from Japan. And wholesalers are starting to carry a lot more of these things. Like now I can get Mr. Metal Color um, from LA. I don't, I don't have to do the whole <laughs> customs thing from Japan. That's, that's relatively new. It's getting better that way. I'm very happy about that. Oh, you're in London. Don't, what about Humbrol, Risty? I thought Humbrol was, was really big in the UK. And my understanding is Humbrol paints are really, really good too. Let me zoom you out. Oop. Hope you don't mind, I'm just taking a bit of a coffee break here and having a good chat. Um, in terms of the, I like using lacquers myself. I prefer lacquers. Uh, for, for finishing stuff and like the wires and stuff, I will use, absolutely use acrylics, maybe some enamels. Uh, but I understand all clad is extremely good uh, lacquer. And of course, all the Mr. Metal or the Mr. Mr. Color products are my favorite, and they're all lacquers. Uh, let me think here. I think All Clad also makes some non lacquer stuff, but their lacquers are really good. Humbrol, again, I, I hear is really good. Those little tins of Humbrol, really good. Oh, okay, they don't have the colors. Cool, I want to see this. I want to see this, Risty. Oh, nice. Oh, that's going to look so cool when you got it all together. The Iron Man Sasabi. Really nice looking metals, too. You got that, that dark metal, which, um, which is what I went for on my Sasabi as well. But it's, it's surprisingly difficult to pull off. That looks really good, Risty. Please be sure to post a, um, a completed pick as well. That would be great. And if you want, go ahead and take that picture and move it over to model making, the model making channel. That way that, that we can, um, I can keep it there and I can have it organized and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Because that, that's really cool. I can't wait to see the progress on that. Very cool, very cool. And thank you so much for the follow. I, I haven't, okay. Mark for Supra, thank you for the follow. Risty, thank you for the follow. And Viking Omega, thank you for the follow, guys. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear alerts if I don't turn my speakers on. <laughs> uh, so I didn't hear the follows. I am so sorry, everybody. I appreciate those follows very much. Um, just so you were aware, this channel usually is, is doing Gumpla on Sundays. Um, I guess Sundays would be more like 9, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The rest of the time, I'm usually speed running and uh, doing stuff with Hollow Knight, just so you're aware. They should, the alerts should be up. You know what I'm going to do here? Let me...
Are they not working? It should pop. Hmm. Here, give me give me a sec. We'll we'll see what's going on here. <laughs> 